welcome to another in the series, Soup and Chat, a place where we talk about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's our pleasure this afternoon to be coming into your homes and to be talking about the goodness of the Lord. Good evening, listeners and viewers, wherever you are in the Caribbean or international or right here at home in Jamaica. Welcome to another evening on Sip and a Chat. It's always our pleasure to join you in your homes this afternoon to just another enlightening and refreshing discussion as we get into our topic for tonight. And I have one of my co-hosts. It has been a while since she has been here, but she's one of our foundation members, so to speak, of Sip and Chat Foundation guests. Right. So today we want to talk about a very interesting topic, one that a lot of persons shy away from, but it's so integral to our a daily living and the issue I want to talk about today is this matter of times and seasons so I want to use this opportunity to welcome my special guest today Miss Crystal Hay um, and a very a very industrious young woman who is also an HR professional as well and we're going to delve but most of all woman of God I can't leave her that part right um, because what, one of the things that I think is important as we get in discussion as well is to always try to integrate how as 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 Christians you know we need to understand that what is important in the world sometimes some fundamental principles are also key to the successful management of the body of Christ so I think that was also important to say that you're also a Christian as well now one of the wisest men who ever lived was King Solomon. And Solomon, in all of his wisdom, in all of the topics that he could have written about, he took time out in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 to talk about times and seasons. And I just want to take a little extract from it that he said. He said, for, there's a time for everything under the sun. He said, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. And he went on and on till the end of the chapter just to talk about different times and seasons. So that's what I want to promise our discussion on this afternoon, Miss Hay, on the whole matter of time and how important is time to anybody at all, whether you are under 16 or over 17 how important is this this factor? Let us call it as this factor of time. Uh, so welcome and just talk to us about it now. So thank you for having me, Doc. It's a pleasure. So times and seasons are very important. As you said, it's not something that is just a part of our Christian lives, but it it it, it deals with our with us as an as an whole. Meaning in our secular job, mm -hmm. time, time is important in our Christian life. Time is important. And as you said, the great Solomon speaks about time and season, a man of great wisdom. So he knows that that is something that is critical for us as Christians and as we try to, to move in our daily lives. So one of the things that we know about time is that time cannot, basically we can take back time. Somebody said time is like the tide. You know, when you go to the beach like water, you're never going to the same water again because the tide is moving and so is time. And we have to understand that one of the major challenges to, to time management is a whole matter of procrastination. Talk to us about that. All right. So time is very, very, very important. In order for something to be achieved, you must be planning in a certain time frame how you're going to be doing doing it procrastination a big word mm -hmm. a lot of us procrastinate for one or or more reasons why do i say that we procrastinate maybe because we do not plan mm -hmm. maybe because we we are not consistent right maybe because we get caught up in doing other things we're not prioritizing so procrastination has has caused a lot of people to miss their moment an opportunity could have presented itself or they could have put themselves in a position out there and they missed it because mm -hmm. of procrastination. So for me, time, you have to move quickly and plan. Right. And, and the thing is that what we have to understand, first of all, is that we don't control time. 
We don't control time. We don't control the minutes. We don't control the seconds. And when, when time moves, we can take back time and say, okay, I'm grabbing back my time, right? I mean, certainly we can try to redeem some of the time that we have, have would have lost. But the thing is that in trying to redeem that time, we will we are now using time that we would have had available to us. And, and so time is, we cannot really regain the time because once it is gone, it is gone. So for example, students who are studying, right? Um, what are some of the things that we want to say to them as it relates to time? Because a lot of times people say tomorrow, tomorrow. And you know, we say tomorrow is for no man. So no is a time that we need to use. So people who are making preparations like they are studying or what are some of the things that we always need to bear in mind, especially like when you're studying, because we have a lot of young viewers as well and everybody is doing something nowadays. So <laughs> procrastination, mm -hmm. that keeps coming back. I mean, what I do believe that sometimes we have to take small steps. Very good. So in studying, you're not going to just, you know, the exam is today mm -hmm. and then you're studying tomorrow you're gonna swap. But what I do believe that you take small steps, you continuously prioritize some time and go through your book. So what I would say, manage your time. It's best when the information is, is fresh in your mind, you mm -hmm. always try and go back and refer. So I would say to the young students, don't wait till the last minute. Mm -hmm always oh, i have to cut it there because you have some young students who are saying no man i'm a last minute person i'm a swatter but and i can testify to that as well i'm a i can swat very well but what what i find is that and this is what i want to get to as well the whole matter of stress on the body is that even though sometimes we know that we can really accomplish the task even when it's very close to the crunch time what we need to understand is that on our mental faculties and just on our bodies as a whole, even though sometimes we'll have that adrenaline rush at the last minute, we still put a lot of pressure on our bodies. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves because you see what we do is sometimes that we assume that everything will be in order. And so we say that even though we have procrastinated, we're saying, oh, I have it locked. You know, in Jamaica, we say we have it locked. But when we, when we examine our situation and one variable is out of line, that's when the, 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 the adrenaline starts to kick in and we start to get ang anxious and all those sort of things. So time is very, very important, whoever you are and whatever age you are. Now, even, even sometimes when we talk about um, time as well, we want to look at some of the things that you see, like we can make a to-do list. You know, that would add structure to the whole matter of time. So we know what is it. And in the corporate world, what we find is that a lot of persons say, oh, this is urgent. Everything is urgent. But there, is, is, is that true? Is that everything is, is it, is it true that everything is important? Are, are there some things that are urgent, but they they might not be, are important, but they're not urgent? Uh, talk to us a little bit about that because you're, you've been in corporate and you know the pressure that comes with, you know, just deal with that, uh, that big vast um, um, portfolio that you have. How important is us to understand that everything cannot be urgent and important? Yes, so you have to put some structure to it. Everything can be urgent. Everything can be important. So you must choose what is most important. And then so hold on. So what I'm hearing you say now is that there are categories, categories. Of, 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 of streamlining what you have to do. Can we take a sip now? And today we're having a nice cup of tea courtesy of Miss Caroline. Thank you. Very good tea. Yeah, she, she has the coffee locked. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So yes, interesting doc, that persons must be able to and you mentioned something about to do the to do list mm -hmm. i mean with the development in technology people hardly use that right you have different <laughs> different you have a google calendar your google calendar you have your outlook calendar so there are different you even have your cell phone right where you have calendar that can guide you so you have different things that can prompt you so the pressure is not on you the individual so people must utilize this technology i mean i believe in not working harder i believe in working smarter yes yeah, i said again to the audience <laughs> out there so it's always good to work smarter and not harder because i think it is so important for you to stress that because a lot of people think that when you talk to them you say wow well, working so hard i'm working so hard but they wasted a lot of their time and they know they're at this crunch time and they know they almost feel overwhelmed and you think that they're working hard but had they worked smarter i want to talk to, to our viewers this afternoon as well is that some persons are saying that boy you don't have to really plan not numbers a spontaneous person i just 
I just do it as I feel. And that is good sometimes. A little spontaneous decision is important. But I think at the root of a successful um, move, a successful initiative is going to be some level of time management. You understand? And I think that that is what is important. Um, whether you're in the secular side or the secular side or you're in a um, church, planning with time is going to be very, very important. Yes. So, Doc, um, interesting that you say that. I remember that I, I made some plans mm -hmm. previously and I had some, I would say, some hiccups mm -hmm. or something just happened and just erased that plan. And I would say maybe at one time, I really don't want any any plan. You know, mm -hmm. I was in that little stage where I said, after I made this plan, something terrible happened and the plan just looked like it's not going to be. So one of the things that I think is very important is that we have to understand that time, t in, in terms of the spontaneity, where, 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 where it does occur, right? Spontaneity is going to come up. We have to understand that even though things can be accomplished, the structure. And I find that when you're organizing time, you can put on the decorations to whatever you have because you have more time to review, to assess, and to evaluate. But when you're in a... I was thinking, what are some of the things between male and female? Get a little different in the discussion now. <laughs> between male and female, who you think are better time managers? <laughs> <laughs> I see you laughing. No, you know that we believe in gender equality, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> and as an HR practitioner, that's basically what we do. But I would say that women are better planners. Women do a lot of writing. Women do a lot of planning, preparing. I don't know. I'm a woman. So I just believe that women are the better right. planners. Well, some men will say, <laughs> well, I can tell you, like some men will say that one of the reasons why um, men, a woman waste a lot of time, for example, right? So you have good men who are very focused planners, right? So they, they don't just get up and do stuff. They have to write it out and stuff like that. So like you rightfully say, it, it happens on both sides of the fence. So you have good males who plan very well. You have good females who plan very well. But I heard a man say that one of the main reasons why ladies waste time, for example, they're going to church or to work. They don't take out their clothes before. So what they do is that in the mornings, right, they take up this suit and they say, oh, I'm not feeling this one again today. And so whereas a man can get up and say from la the night before and say, listen, this is what I'm going to church. And I think it's just part of the female physiology, <laughs> female makeup, how, how we are like we, we will change our minds about something. But what we're seeing today is that even in this pandemic, planning is important right we see where for example and time is important because for, for example we notice there there are days when we shut down at 12 o'clock yeah. so you have to now know how to manage your day manage your day talk to us about you have a day in front of you what are some of the key things that you should do even before you just got into the day to make sure that you maximize what can be done in a particular day so as we're speaking on time mm -hmm. and planning for me personally, what I do, I, I have an idea of what I want to do, knowing that a day, even though you plan to do it a specific way, things do happen. Mm -hmm. And so you plan what you're going to do. You may not achieve it on that same day based on different scenarios or different things that would happen in a daily, in any daily operation, whether it be church or whether it be your secular job. So you have to know what you're going to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're, you're going to go head on. Right. You might have a little drifting or shifting, but you still follow on that path. Understand. So as I want to make a little segue you now, as we move a little closer into the seasons now. So we talk about time and we say time is important. We say you need to have structure to your day, right? Because when you don't have structure, it causes a lot of anxiety at times. It wastes time. It brings you sometimes into confrontation with persons. And especially if you're, if you're, if you're working with persons who don't, who don't believe in that kind of structure, it sees you having these constant back and forth with persons. Yeah. But I want to move the discussion a little bit ahead now to talk about seasons, right? And we getting look deeper now into the christian side of the whole concept of time and 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 so as 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 solomon had rightfully captured that for everything there is a season so sometimes in our lives right we go through a period say a period of loneliness a period of of oppression a period of depression talk to us about how how do we manage seasons so for example somebody is going through a period 
uh, of sin uh, loss. How do you manage that 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 time? How do you want to surround yourself? What are you doing in the in the different seasons of your life? And what are some of the things that are important? So for me, you must understand your season mm -hmm. and your time. And don't lie about it. <laughs> and don't lie about I it. I think that's very important because one of the things that we love to do you now is that we love to mask. I should have bring a mask today, right? I have one here. <laughs> We love to we love to mask things, right? Yeah. We, we love to mask because church has taught us to always have this this face, right? Yes. But what we're saying today is that everybody goes through times and seasons in their lives, right? Interesting. And there are times when you when you're laughing because there's something to laugh about, and there are times when truly you're, you're going through your valley. Yeah, and it's right. just a struggle, struggle, struggle. So talk to us, like, talk us a little bit more about those seasons that we pass through and how we should operate. Yes. Yeah, so um, as Solomon rightly says it, everything under the sun has a season. And from some reading that I did, I believe that what the, the, the researcher was saying is that seasons only deals with God in terms of it's a supernatural thing that happened. The, the winter, the summer, those are things that are from the, the supreme mm -hmm. so i mean seasons in our christian life as well the bible says a time to dance a time to to not dance a time to laugh laugh and a time to cry so as you rightfully say we as believers we need to understand that on this part you're gonna have sad days you're gonna have happy days but how do you deal with these sad days how what what are your strategies to help you in this time because trust me when it's happy time everybody likes the happy time mm -hmm. but in the sad time persons like no 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 i i can't go through this but it, it's a mixture of of seasons that develop us as individual very good point very good point that develops us so we need a mixture life cannot be just easy you need you need good season bad season mm -hmm. you need different mix in your life so it's a combination of different season good bad oppression depression but it's how you manage it right and it's important that you said that because we don't want to think that there's a utopic life i think the only time we're going to have that kind of life is when we get to the to, to, to glory yeah. and so while we're we're here in on planet earth we're going to have challenges but i i want i believe though that as we go to our different seasons so even though we have physical spring we have spiritual spring, spring, right? When things are just bursting forth, you know, you find that, you know, just finding Blue that youthful, man, right? Yeah. And then you also have in the spiritual side, you also have that winter. When, I don't know if you ever have that season, when it seems like, boy, nothing, everything cold. That's it. <laughs> and it seems like nothing not happening. But what I like about, uh, like, um, Mrs. He is that for every season in our life that we go through, there is our scripture That's and there is our word. And I said that to say this as well, that even though we have the Bible as our booklet for every season, God has also, I believe, surround us with people that in the seasons that we go through in our lives, when David was going through his season, he had a song. You know what I'm saying? When 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 everybody have their person, mm -hmm. when when even when Naomi was going through her season and frustrated, yeah. she had the people. Isn't it amazing? She had the people saying to her when she decided to call herself, said when they decided to call her Naomi, she said, no, call me Mara because of all her loss. She was going to the bitter period in, in her life, but the people were calling her sweet. And isn't that amazing that even sometimes as we're crossing over into seasons, we need to have that person who says, listen, I believe in you. That's interesting that because I was doing a research as well. And as you rightly say, we call these people our destiny helpers. Mm -hmm. We call these people our destiny connect co connectors. And we call these people our forebearers. Who are these three people? People that connect us, people that helps us in this time, and people that cries with us. So, I mean, when you have different times and seasons, the minute we laugh together, why we can't cry together? Mm -hmm. You're my friend. When I'm going through my deep water, I want to, to come before you and you see the tears, you see everything that's happening. Right. But right, can't right. make it. I can't go through. You know, and you are that person who forbear, you're forbearing, you're helping me, knowing that you're encouraging me. Girl, this too shall pass. So what you're saying no, I hear you saying that even as we talk about times and we talk about seasons, we're saying that 
we need friends in the good season and, and we need friends season. in the bad season. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Some person will stay with us through the good enough. That's it. But when it gets bad, they cannot be there. But I think that during that time, I think the friends that stay with you through the bad are the real friends. Real friends. And I think sometimes, and you can say, uh, what, share your opinion. I think in, in, in some seasons, when we go to the challenges, it's the people that remain with us. That they're true. In, in other words, that in the bad season, when they're true colors and their true identity and a, an affinity and affiliation, connection with you is going to come alive. Because, you know, then we think about Jesus. Many persons were there with him when he had the fish and bread. That's it. Many persons were there even when he was going through on Palm Sunday. But when he was, when he got to the cross, How many were there? the crowd reduced. And, and so when I said to somebody out there today, there's nothing bad about you. It's just, it's just naturally a part of life that when the tides and, and are good, You'll have cheerleaders. You'll have cheerleaders. But when the tough times comes in your life, the crowd is going to diminish. But I want to say to you that you can remember this, as Psalm 122 says, that you can always look to the hills from whence cometh your help, because your help cometh from the Lord. Glory. I, I, feel, I feel so good that saying that. that. I feel so good saying that. <laughs> Indeed, uh, we talk about times and seasons. And I think one of the stories that really bring this point across is also the story of the prodigal son. So let us just talk a little bit about the story and times and seasons and how seasons change. Because, you know, the prodigal son, he, he was living in opulence. His father was rich and he was there, right? And then there came a time when he went to his father. So when we talk about times as well, we have to be careful of the decisions we make at a particular time in our life. Because that de decision that we make today can have a long-term effect tomorrow. That needs a sip, Doc. <laughs> we have to sip I think you one. like Miss Caroline's coffee. But it is so important for us to understand that the decisions that we make in a particular season in our lives will have implications for a future season. That's so true. Because um, as you rightly say, sometimes you don't need to make a move. Sometimes we just need to stand still. Stand still. Stand still and understand what is happening. But here was this son. He decides at that particular time in his life to make that decision to go to his father and say to his father, Daddy, give me what rightfully belongs to me. And as I said, we know our audience is varied, right? So we have some young people who sometimes feel like, yeah, I have arrived. I want my, I want my, my birthright. No, give me. But we need to check ourselves and see if it is the right time. And of course, we're not sure the depth of the discussion that went on between father and son, but his father gave him his birthright, gave him what rightfully belongs to him. And you know the story very well. Talk to us about some of the things that happened to him as he made that decision to walk out of his fund after that. All right. So as you rightly say, he thought in his mind that he was ready for this. Mm -hmm. But based on the happenings, we can say he was not ready. His father, because he wanted it, his father just say, okay, take it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you have to give people what they ask for. And, even and though it's not the right even time. Even though it's not the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, or in other words, my grandmother would say, you allow people to learn from their own mistake. So the prodigal son, he thought he wasn't ready. He thought he, he was thought ready. He thought he was ready, sorry. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And so he made a decision, maybe at a place where he just wanted to, you know, prolong and have a good time. And he thought that, no. I'm man enough to go out and do my own and thing. And as we see in the story, as we read it over and over, as time went by, initially he said he had a lot of friends. So that was a new season in his life. You no, know, he had a lot of friends and he gallivant and he had a good time. But when the money was finished, you no, know, it transferred him to another season in his life. And the, 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 the young man who was coming out of opulence and knew what it meant to eat and dine at the king's table was now fighting with the, pigs. with the pigs for their food. Oh, wow. What a story. But so what we're saying is that every decision that we make as a consequence, as a consequence, and sometimes we're in different seasons in our lives. We have to try to understand why are we in this season? Should we stand still 
or should we make a move? Yes. Because every decision that we make will have a consequence. And I just want to read this to realize the value of time. One, one year, ask a student who has failed that exam. So for different people, different activities within a, 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 a time frame can have serious implications. To realize the value of one month, ask the mother who has given birth to a premature baby. To realize the value of one week, ask the editor of a weekly newspaper. <laughs> so different, 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 different expands of time will mean different things to different people. To, to realize the value of one minute, ask the person who has missed the train or the bus. Hmm. Because once you miss that, that's it. That's it. To realize the value of one second, ask the person who has survived an accident. In other words, you know that if you were there one second earlier, that would have happened to you. To realize the value of a millisecond, wow. ask the person who, who has won a silver medal in an Olympics. You see how time is important. It means different things to different people. So we want to say to our audience today that this, this is a valuable commodity. Don't take time for granted because time waste cannot be regained. We want to say to you as well, know your season, understand your season, know when to make a move and know when to stand still. Because as we started this afternoon by promising this conversation, that the wisest man who ever lived was Solomon. And he took time out to write an entire chapter about the importance of time. As we close this evening, let me challenge you. Make hay while the sun shines because tomorrow is promised to no man. Until next time, we will continue to be here with you on Sundays and Thursdays as we continue to sip and chat. Thank <laughs> you.